So first off, this is a 20 foot long, eight and a half foot wide trailer. It is also an extra two feet tall, which I believe makes it eight and a half feet tall. So it's, it's a really tall. I think it's about as tall as you can go. Uh, eight lug wheels. So that's a 7,000 pound axle, 14K GVW. It's heavy duty. Um, you can carry some serious weight in this thing, which is really handy. <clears throat> Extended tongue. Um, we got the pental hook on here. All of our trucks have pental hooks. So that's how all of our trailers are set up as well. Um, somebody's, this is not correct. <laughs> this, this right here should be hooked to the truck. That was, I don't know who did that, but they know better. Um, the, this is a heavy duty jack here. The tongue is extended. Um, that allows you to pull these things with the dump truck really easy. So I'll take you around, show you inside. So looking up through the back here, this is kind of the overview. Shelving unit here, shelving unit here, and there's a shelving unit up front. Um, this is a, just a metal rack that we have pinned to the sidewall there. Um, not, not a big fan of it. We're going to replace that with a wooden rack and do something a little different there. As you can see, there's a lot, a lot of open space in this trailer. Um, there's a ton of equipment and tools in here, but there's still a wide open lane right down the middle here. So we can pull our buggy, we can pull a Vermeer in here. Um, we, we are really picky about what goes in here. It has to meet certain criteria and get used quite a bit. <clears throat> we just do not like having clutter. The more clutter you have, it slows you down. So it's only the necessities, but as you can see, there are quite a bit of necessities. So we'll start off on the back here. Um, these are Rackham tool holders. You can see they kind of hook into the top there. They've got like a little lip or they, they hook onto the lip uh, of the trailer there. And uh, they allow you to hold shovels, brooms, rakes, things like that. We got some labels on those. Uh, we've got E-Track going on the side with the ratchet straps. And uh, that holds the fabric. GeoGrid. Um, this is one of those uh, two-man tents. So we, if it's raining, we can throw that up while we're working. Got the hand tamp, couple cones, couple uh, diesel fuel cans. <clears throat> Um, then we got our shelf here. Like I said, this shelf, it's not ideal for this situation. You can see that we've got the straps, um, which works. It's fine. It's worked for several years for us, but, uh, I've got some different ideas on that that we'll probably do over the winter here. Um, this is kind of the main, our main tool area, the stuff that we're grabbing every single day. <clears throat> so you guys have a microwave here. Um, We've got a locator, that's a wire locator, valve locator right there, um, so they can find wires and things. We have a better one than that that I keep on my truck, but um, they're at least able to find certain wires in the ground pretty quick. I believe this is a Sawzall. This is our Stabila laser level, the LAR 350. We call this the daily bag, <clears throat> and it's just a bag with all the stuff that we're using basically every day there's a few things in there right now that don't belong in there but uh basically that is stuff that's going out every single day hammers string lines tape measures just we run about a two to three man crew so it's enough tools for two to three guys and that bag basically goes out every single day along with the laser and some other things so this is our lighting bag. So every tool that you can think of that you need to do lighting with is in here. <clears throat> We've got it separated into like these little bags. So there's some hand tools in there. Um, that has, this has uh, the soldering stuff. So there's flux and there's a little torch and solder. So different things for lighting in there. We switched over to using these uh, <clears throat> Alliance, a lock waterproof connectors. 
These things are so nice. Um, basically, they just have a set screw. It's a gel-filled cavity in there, and you push your wires in, and you twist the set screw down. You literally, two guys can pull on each one of those wires, and you cannot pull them apart. So that is a really nice uh, thing that Alliance makes. So down below, we've got a shop vac. <clears throat> Just use that kind of randomly, cleaning things up. Um, right here we've got, this is a dedicated bin for grinders. So we've got a, a seven inch, four inch, battery powered four and a half inch, and then a bunch of grinding wheels and things in there. This is, these are, these two are just random DeWalt power tools and chargers and batteries and things. So drills and sawzalls and everything, impact driver, all that kind of stuff is in there. Down below, propane tank with the torch. Always need that. <clears throat> and then we got like a half bag of concrete, a half bag of poly. Um, spool of lighting wire and a spool of RG6 cable. So if we, or coaxial, so if we break someone's coaxial or need to just run a temporary coaxial line while we're working, we've got that in there. Um, and here we've got our Weber um, CF1 compactor. We use that for uh, packing, final packing. We'll use it for small little areas that we can't get in with the CR5. Um, it does a good job. It's only 150 pounds, and uh, so you guys can lift it really easy. And we do have the the poly pad for it. However, we have just started using this in the last couple of years. Basically, it's just a mud flap, and we have two pieces of direct burial Romex on there, <clears throat> and we can put that pad on and off so much faster that it doesn't even make sense to use that expensive poly pad we just use that thing and as those wires get busted we just replace the wires and um maybe we'll go through a pad every year and a half like it's not that big of a deal so we we prefer to be able just to use that packer both ways and uh the mud flap works just fine so up here extension cords got like a 100 footer 50 footer 25 footer then we have our big long 100 foot um air hose <clears throat> this is for the pave more which is hanging up right behind that on these e-track hooks i think i got all these e-track hooks on amazon they're real easy to find um this hose actually we were having trouble with the pave mores at first and especially in the cold weather and we found out the hose is has to be a cold weather rated hose and that one is so we like the 100 footer what we'll do is we'll take our generator or not our generator our air compressor and we'll put our air compressor like way out of the way around the corner of the house so we're not listening to it and then we've got that 100 foot of hose so we've got plenty of room to stretch it over um you also notice everything in here <clears throat> or most of the things in here um are painted red or have a red mark on them or something that way um because we have multiple trucks and trailers and things everyone knows if, if it's red it goes in this trailer this trailer is rated or uh, labeled like i think it's t1 and it's got a red sticker on it that's how we label all of our trucks so everyone knows where everything goes at the end of the day generator um that's just a generac i don't know i think it's like maybe 5,000 watt or something like that <clears throat> It's been a, yeah, 5,500 watt. It's been a good generator. We've used that quite a bit. The IQ saw here. So all of our big stuff we have lined up right here and it's secured with a strap that goes from the E-Track to the E-Track, just right across there and we can tie it in real easy. And what we've always had before in these trailers was a, a bench or a racking that went up across the front there. But we found that that got jammed up <clears throat> really quickly. It got cluttered really easily. So we decided to leave this all the way open to the front on this trailer. And it's been really good. It's, it's really helped uh, keep from jamming up the front area of the trailer, which has a tendency to happen. So let's see, this DeWalt light 
has been really good. It's, uh, well, actually just in the mornings and evenings in here when it's dark this time of year, we'll just flip that thing on. I can actually flip it on right now. You can see it brightens up the whole trailer. <clears throat> that actually lights up the whole trailer when it's actually dark out. So that's been good. Post hole digger. And uh, we've got some hose and a spud bar there. Buckets hanging. We keep a lot of buckets just for random stuff that we're doing. Um, stretch wrap, stuff like that. That's a brick puller that always stays in a trailer. That's nice for pulling out pavers as needed, moving things around. Um, 100 foot, that's a 100 foot hose. It's one of those, uh, I can't remember what they're called. One of those like, it's like a fabric hose. It's awesome though, it fits all the way. 100 foot goes in that bucket and it's super light and easy to get around. Um, this rack's kind of a, a mess, but you can see how tall we're able to go with this trailer. It, you can have a lot of junk in here and it doesn't get cluttered, which is awesome. So up above a couple milk crates, um, there's like oil, there's def. Um, I don't know what's in that one. I can't remember. I think that's like the, the locks for our, uh, oh, there's a, there's a couple ratchet strats up there and the, the locks for our, uh, pads that we can tie them together. It's kind of nice to have your razor blades hanging up. And then we have a trash pump up there and a hose. It's a real nice uh, trash pump that can dewater in a hurry. Um, <clears throat> impact driver. And oh, those are the locks that tie the uh, plastic pads that we have, uh, the boards. We're able to tie uh, either two of them or four of those together to make a turning pad for our um, Bobcat. So we can turn all up on the pads and then we keep a dedicated impact for that and for some other things too. And then the guys kind of have, this area is a little bit messy right now, but they keep their uh, PPE and their boots and things there and just made our lunch boxes and stuff during the day. Um, <clears throat> laser receiver, um, they like to just hang it up there, keeps it from having to go in the box. And you, basically in order to put this in the box, you have to take this apart and they found it's a lot easier just to hang that thing up on that post and grab it in the mornings. It keeps it keeps it from, we don't want to throw it in the bag either because then it's going to get beat up um, riding around in that bag. So <clears throat> down here we have our saws, blades, and blower. So we keep two saws. One is our main saw. It's a TS-700 DeWalt, or uh, not DeWalt, steel. And that is a great saw. What we like about it is it has a ton of power and the handle is on the back side and that makes it very ergonomic. Even though that's very heavy compared to your old TS 420s, um, it's a lot easier to handle, a lot easier on your back because you're staying more upright as you're cutting on the ground. So we definitely prefer that. We've got the Latex Hurricane blade on that. Latex Hurricane blade on this or Latex, I don't know if it's Hurricane, Latex blade on this. And we've also got the Latex blade on the IQ saw. Big fans of those blades. They are awesome. Highly recommend those. This thing has been a new addition in the last couple months. And we have used it quite a bit. <clears throat> it's really good for etching. Um, it's good for cutting out small radiuses like uh, fire pits. Um, it's very handy just to make a quick cut here and there because you have instant power. I mean, you just pull the trigger and you're cutting. So you don't have to drag a cord out. You don't have to pull start it. Uh, quick cuts. Uh, this thing has just been awesome. And you're not going to sit here and cut in a whole patio with it. That's what that's for. But you can you can do some um, some things quickly and easily with that. It's super light. Um, it just it's it's really handy. We like it. <clears throat> Down here, we've got the old uh, the old school chop saw with the latex blade on it as well. We have to get that. That's, we just use that kind of in a pinch, or if we're doing a ton of mitering and we've got two guys cutting, um, typically we're using this. But actually, the other day, the brushes went out on that thing, so we had to bust this guy out and uh, miter in a patio with that. So <clears throat> we keep that on hand just in case we need it five gallon fuel tank of gas, two and a half gallon of mix, and 
two and a half gallon of regular. We've started carrying a little bit more regular because we've got the the buggy on the site and that thing sucks it down pretty quick. So, and then we've got a, a Milwaukee uh, circular saw and that's also got a metal blade. That's handy here and there. Just uh, nice to have around. So th this shelf's been really good. Um, just made out two by fours um, and wrapped it around with three quarter inch plywood. That's uh, that. This has been really solid. Hasn't budged, and <clears throat> it's been with the extra height in here. You just have so much. There's a lot going on in there, and and again, I didn't want to take it across the front here because I wanted to be able to have this aisle way go all the way up. What what ends up happening if you run that across the front is you end up losing aisle space, and then there's all this unusable space like in the corners here you'd have a corner on each side that would be completely unusable so um, i recommend not putting a bench or something across the front of your trailer if you can avoid it sometimes you can't avoid it but in our case um, we were able to and i think that i can attribute that to the additional height that's in here <clears throat> so this is the main piece that i stole from my buddy andy that is the Milwaukee, um, I can't remember what those things are called. Pa they're not pack outs, it's the other thing. But uh, we made this out of uh, three quarter inch plywood and I used the Craig system. So you can see uh, all the Craig screws that fasten this together. And then we have it fastened to the sidewall of the trailer. It's been completely solid, haven't had a single issue with that. <clears throat> We have um, all of these bins are full of all kinds of tools or all kinds of supplies and tools. So this one I just pulled out uh, tap cons, concrete anchors, concrete nails. So you got every size tap con, keep the drills in there with it, some redheads, <clears throat> all ready to go. So you can see it when you're on a job site and you need something quickly, it's there, you don't have to think about it, you don't have to go to Lowe's, you don't have to go to the hardware store, you just got it. So we have these uh, all labeled now and we have the numbers, so they're going back in the same spot every time. And that's handy because you know what happens when you're working, you go hop in the trailer, you wanna grab something, you wanna know where it's at, it's like muscle memory, you just wanna go for number four because you know that's where it's at <clears throat> so no, as much as you can do that the more efficient you're going to be so let's see at the top we've got um three quarter inch electrical connectors and fittings that's just three quarter inch stuff i honestly can't reach that so I'm gonna grab it right here we've got uh stuff that's at the top is stuff that doesn't get used a whole lot some swim tight fittings, irrigation stuff, nozzles. We don't do a lot of irrigation, but we got it. You hit a head, you gotta do a little repair. <clears throat> it's there, so we can. Um, sprinkler heads, that's just full of sprinkler heads. Drip irrigation, we use this quite a bit. We do a lot of drip irrigations on our jobs. So that's got every fitting for a drip irrigation. Got some staples. So the guys will take this and a spool of drip line and go out and go through the yard and do the job and work out of this bin. So it's, it's labeled, just grab it and roll. <clears throat> Batteries, let's see. So, you can imagine like having all this stuff in, you know, on a shelf or in a bin, how messy it would be and how quickly it'd be cluttered. So having these uh, organized Milwaukee cases is just awesome. We need to stock up on some batteries, um, nine volts, double A's. These are freezies in our laser. Um, so we go through those quite a bit. Um, electrical tape, masking tape, <clears throat> duct tape, caution tape. Got a bunch of tape, so like I said, just keep all this stuff with you 
you don't have to think about it when we load up in the morning. Um, you don't have to, you just have to think about the main things that you have to do that day. You don't have to think about every little detail that you're going through that day. And inevitably, if you've ever done this kind of work, you know you're going to forget something no matter what. <clears throat> there are going to be things you don't think of. So this has got some PPE, got some propane tanks. I need to add some glasses in here and earplugs, respirators, all that kind of stuff. So I'll just kind of go through each one of those and give you guys an idea of what we actually have in these. <clears throat> Sorry for the camera work. Uh, I already did that one. That's Tapcons, screws, pins, nails, wire staples. And I haven't gone through this, so we'll see if everything's kind of in order here. Yeah, so sheet metal screws, concrete nails, reforming nails, um, GRKs, a couple things of GRK screws, deck screws, staples, pins, stuff that you're always, you know, stuff that falls off trailers and trucks and things you always need. This little nails and um, these kind of screws for gutters and downspouts and things. So it's a little bit messed up to go through that here this winter, but that is <clears throat> screws, stuff you just always need. This one is razor knives, marking tape measures. This is, this is kind of like a supply house. So like we keep a lot of this stuff in there. The guys have their own little bags that they carry. But when they, you know, they, they lose a pencil or they lose a tape measure or they need something, they can run in here and grab it. Um, just keeps us supplied constantly, you know. So there's a few tape measures in there. That's for uh, water, uh, watering and hoses. If we break a hose on the job site, we can fix it. These red, we use these red pencils pretty much exclusively. I actually found some, we were getting them from the Unilock every year, but we were running through them quick, pretty quick. So I found some of these uh, on Amazon that actually are better. But the red pencils are real easy to see on a grade stick. Hope you see grade. Just a, like a brand new chalk line. There used to was probably three at the beginning of the year in here, but they break, things happen. So just keep extra stuff so guys can grab it. Some uh, Sharpies. <clears throat> they always have what they need. They don't have to... Oh man, we broke the chalk line. Now we got to go to Lowe's. You know, no, you can just grab one out of the trailer and uh, keep working. It's the game, game, keep working. That's uh, we keep a drone, an old like little DJI drone, time lapse camera. That's not in there right now because our time lapse camera broke. This is uh, just a little I don't have a label on this one yet, but mechanics tools. And that's just some sockets, <clears throat> ratchet. There's, keep the line level in there because if it's in that bag, it gets beat up. Um, just some hand tools, air chuck, stuff like that. Just, you never know what you're gonna get into. This has saved our butt sometimes, you know, on the way to the job site. Um, you have a tire go flat or something like that. Or uh, gotta work on a machine, real quick stuff. We have a mechanic that does most of it, but you know, Sometimes you get in a pinch. This is handy right here. It's our cable repair kit. And this has uh, everything you need to fix RG6 or uh, RG11 cables because we're always running into people's cable lines. And a lot of our clients, they work from home <clears throat> and uh, they got kids, whatever. It's a big deal if you knock out their cable. So we keep all this stuff on the trailer, if we hit their cable line, we have it marked, we mark it, we pull it out of the ground. We always are very cautious not to hit it, but inevitably someone accidentally shoots a spade through a cable line here and there. So we have the little tool kit from Klein, and then we have the fittings, and I showed you we had that uh, spool of RG6 there, and we also, we have a spool of RG11 too, that's in the shop, but um, <clears throat> We're able to fix the line real quick. And then we, they do have like an outdoor repair kit. We use these uh, just heat shrinks and put those around it. We have pretty good success with that. Um, and then these are, there's there's some more area that we can 
utilizing here, we actually threw our extra set of brushes that we bought and a couple little ram screws for the saw. We threw them in here the other day, so probably find a better place. But for now, that'll work fine. <clears throat> one inch fittings, I won't show you that. One and a quarter inch fittings, that's just PVC fittings. Um, I guess I'll just go through one of these, but they're all pretty much set up the same. <clears throat> um, this is, which one is this? One and a half inch PVC. So just some random fittings, 90s, 45s, couplers, um, unions, and then we've got some pipe dope and thread tape in there too. So just, we've got, we've got a little bit for as much size of different pipes and things as we can. So just for the same thing. If we hit <clears throat> irrigation or we hit a sump pump discharge line or we have to make a quick repair to something or add a sleeve in, we've just got it. There's no <clears throat> there's no running around. Like you can just keep working, go to the trailer, grab what you need, grab as much stuff on here as we possibly can. So that's the this has been a really, really cool addition to the trailer and it's helped with the clutter. You can see it's pretty pretty low clutter in here pretty clean it's not like we spend a whole lot of time in here cleaning it out and all that we, we pretty much just work and sweep it out here and there and we don't we don't do a whole lot of cleaning in here so this keeps the clutter at a minimum as long as things go back where they're supposed to go the clutter is under control so we, we just added this whiteboard this is really nice my dewalt lights flickering because it's going dead i think um, basically we got a, a list of things there, whatever we need for the job can go here and whatever we need for the trailer. Like if they're going through one of these, oh shoot, like I just noticed that we need some batteries. So all right up here, um, I think it was D. It's hard to write looking through your camera. D batteries. So I can read that, no one else can, but <laughs> we'll, uh, we know what we need to get. We need to get some pink marking paint, torpedo level, some more SRW glue and D batteries. And then this, like at the end of the day, the guys can write, this is what we need for the job. So in the morning when they come in here and they're loading up and getting things together, they can just refer to this list. Cause you know how it is when you get, leave a job and you go back home and go to bed and come up in the morning and uh, you forget what you were supposed to grab. So that keeps us, keeps us moving. All right, up here, this is all of our level straight edges, uh, a couple two by fours. Um, that's the pave tool grade rod that stays at a constant zero. That thing, it was like, I, it was something crazy expensive, like 300 bucks for a grade rod or something, but I, it's worth every penny. That has been the, one of the best things that we've ever bought. Um, I'll show you it's not like a typical grade rod it actually has let's see on this side it it has a zero at the bottom and then what 66 at the top and 160 it's got centimeters and inches so over here is a centimeter or inches this is the centimeters so typically we use this side and you can see there's a zero right in the middle there and if you watch their videos, Pave Tools got some good videos on this. Um, you set your grade reader right here, and then there's a slide inside of this that goes up and down. So you're you're always setting everything off zero. So if you know your thresholds at zero, <clears throat> you set your grade there, and then you can set your excavation negative nine. And you just slide your thing up to negative nine. Everybody's on the same page. Everybody's working together. It is just a lot less headaches. Just trust me on that one. Spend the money, get that thing if you don't have it. For sure. Eight foot levels, six foot level, four foot levels, all the levels. We've got a bunch of levels up there and they, they stay. I don't think we've ever had them fall out of this thing. It looks like this one looks like it might not be sitting there right, but this little rack up here, having this little two by four ledge right here. We haven't had any issues with those falling out. So um, these are <clears throat> these are all just random masonry tools and 
tools that we use quite a bit, but don't necessarily go out every single day. So we have this little chain there to keep these from falling out. Um, let's see, okay, we've got a fish tape. We've got an extra, actually that that uh, square right there is blue. It doesn't belong in here, it belongs in a, oh, never mind. It's just blue. It's got some red marking on there. It does go in here. Uh, fish tape, crowbar, dead blow. Um, that's the big, the big uh, mallet. We like these sim, what are they, sims? Uh, I can't remember what the heck they're called. They're nice mallets. These are way better than dead blow. Simplex. Simplex hammers. I think Pave Tool sells those. Boar hog. These guys all sell them. Those are awesome. That that thing will really, um, it'll move a six foot step. Tap on that thing and it'll actually move it. So stuff you can see just big old pry bars, more dead blows. Um, there's a chisel down there. It's like a pencil, um, wire brush, 100 foot tape. Stuff that we keep in here, we know we need it. And this is all your trowels, all your concrete stuff. Um, that would jam up the bag pretty good. So we just grab those as needed and at the end of the day, throw those back out. They might keep like one trowel in the bag and if they need a couple more, they can go in there and grab it, whatever they need. Longer tape, more trowels, screwdrivers, I don't know, concrete bonding, adhesive, fortifier, just random stuff that we need in here, notch trowels, um, all kinds of stuff. Random stuff there. Then these, these last two are dedicated. So this is a dedicated greaser basket. So whenever we need to grease the machines, we try to do the, we try to grease the machines on Mondays. Every Monday we grease everything. They take this out and uh, they just take this basket around to each machine on the job site and grease it. <clears> that <throat> works out pretty good. And then what do we got here? This is a drill box. So all the SDS plus, um, a big old electric drill, and then there's a bunch of bits. So this is just for like large drilling, concrete drilling. We have that. We also have SDS Max drill, but we don't keep that in this trailer yet. We just don't use it enough to justify keeping it in here. Um, like I said, we try to keep this trailer bare minimum. <clears throat> if it's something that we're only going to use once every couple months, it doesn't really need to be here. Um, we can we can know when we're going to need an SDS Max drill. We keep that in the shop and grab it as needed. But basically stuff that's in here is getting used quite a bit and if you know the criteria to the criteria to stay in here for a, a small piece of equipment is a, oops, is a little bit lower than the criteria of staying here for a large piece of equipment so uh, sds max drill i need to be using that thing quite a bit to justify keeping it in this trailer just it's just real estate i just don't want to be hauling it around and jamming this thing up with a bunch of junk so we we have kind of a discussion on each piece of equipment that goes in here if it's over a certain size and uh that we, we just don't want a whole bunch of stuff in here and we we're able to grab it easy enough so if if we find that uh we're using something like an sds max drill quite a bit and we want to start putting it in here we'll find a place for it we'll make a place for it and uh we'll keep it in here but until that happens it doesn't come in here so back here we've got more Hand tools. Um, I don't know why that, hey, that spade's kind of hanging on there funny, but whatever, it works. Um, these hooks are E-Track hooks. They're pretty strong. I mean, that's those are two really heavy hammers and uh, hangs up there just fine. Got some straps back here, boulder straps. And then we keep all of our, <coughs> all of our screed rails slide right up in there. So on the back ramp here, you just slide your screw rails right in there. Um, makes them real easy to get into, get them in and out of the trailer. And then we have, uh, there's like a spud bar down there and a couple grade stakes. And we've chopped up some uh, screed rails there for a setting wall block, base course. Um, and then there's some, we use the, this EMT here. I think that's half inch EMT. 
And we've got a few pieces of that that you can see they're marked in red so that we don't accidentally use them as conduit. But we utilize those for marking out radiuses on pavers. Um, anytime it's not a true radius, more of just a curved area, we'll use those. True radius, we'll find the actual center point and mark with a tape measure. So, let's see. Trash bags, more, um, oh, this is, this is grip tape that's gonna go on the ramp back there we just haven't put on yet. Um, staples, all kinds of, th this is kind of a hodgepodge bin right here. It needs cleaned up a little bit. There's a, a bottle jack. Like I said, you never know when you're gonna have to jack something up and you know, track falls off or um, wheel falls off a trailer or something silly like that. You've just got the ability to do what you need to do. <clears throat> this is all um, kind of consumables. So PVC glue, that's not in here right now because it would freeze. That actually takes up the most uh, space in here. So glue and primer, WD-40, PB blaster, chalk, extra chalk. I think there's like some epoxy and this, this probably already froze and got ruined, but that's a uh, <clears throat> contact cement for that uh, paver more paper placer we have. Marking paint, <clears throat> most of that probably already froze too. That should have come out of here. But actually, this is all this is all the old marking paint that we don't even use anyways. We like the actually this kind stinks it's like no pressure very low um we like the pink color the best it's easiest to see and this this krylon that one's almost empty krylon quick mark industrial this seems to be the best they have um a lot more paint per bottle <clears throat> i like that one so well when the actual season gets started most of this actually get cleared out thrown away and all this will be completely full of marking paint and then this type of glue doesn't freeze we can keep it in here but it gets hard so we have to when we're working we actually keep this in the truck and keep the truck running and keep it warm um, we don't use this this is just because um, we ran out of the big tubes and had to go to Lowe's and buy some PL8X oh my god I said go to Lowe's that was terrible we shouldn't have had to do that. <laughs> we, we ordered uh, some glue, but they brought us the wrong kind, so we had to go get this. But this, this if you um, don't have premium SRW glue or whatever kind of premium fast setting glue that you normally use, you can always go to the Lowe's and grab this stuff. This stuff works just as good, but it is super hard to get out of the container when it's cold. It's very thick. So we have these um, 